Hello and welcome to the show. Today I am going to be taking a classic American muscle car around the autocross course. Now I have done some classic American cars before the old Corvettes, the 65 Mustang, but uh, they have all been relatively small and relatively light comparatively. This this is not going to be. I've gone for the Oldsmobile, the Hurst Olds 442. It's a muscle car that doesn't get a, used a huge amount. I don't think I've driven it before in Forza 6, so I thought I would give something a bit different a try. It might struggle, I think. I think it might struggle, although it does have some things going for it. So the first big difficulty with this car is going to be the weight. It does start off as rather heavy, 3,855 pounds. That is a fair amount of weight, but admittedly, there is plenty of power and even more torque from standard. 500 torque to start. <laughs> that's, that's a lot in this vehicle. I'm hoping by the time that uh, I finish modifying the car, we will have, yeah, some quite impressive power numbers. The other good thing is the tyres. The tyres are going to be massive on here, so we should have pretty decent traction. Roll cage is going to add some weight in, but I want that chassis rigidity. I want the car to handle as well as possible. Full weight reduction will drop it down to 3,139. Now, we might be able to get this under 3,000. Possibly. We might be pushing our luck a little bit on that, but uh, we shall see. Race tyres are also going to be the order of the day. Are we going to? We are. Three, four, fives on the rear. Always nice to have these size tyres on the back of the car. We will get lovely amounts of traction. Two, seven, fives on the front. Not the largest front tyres we have seen. Uh, often it's two, eight, fives that go on the front of the muscle cars. However, that is what it's going to have to do. Okay, uh, aero parts, we're going to be wanting these on here. Anything that can give me a little bit more grip would be nice. It's got a strange, it's got a strange rear wing from standard. It's kind of swept the, the wrong, I say the wrong way, the, the different way to the way that I would expect it to be, and it's in a slightly interesting mounting position. But either way, we're going for the, the Forza Air Dam. Uh, we could go for these bonnets, but I don't particularly like either of them, and we might use the PI for something else. So if we need one PI, we might come back to that. Uh, shall we go have a look at engine now? Uh, we will have a look. Okay, exhaust. Please save me lots of weight. Please save me lots of weight. It's a fair amount. We're going to be uh, going for that one. Now, there should possibly, yeah, some of these might save a little bit. Okay, we're not quite going to get enough to get it under under the 3,000 mark. We may, in fact, have to go for some aspiration swaps. I think we might actually have to go for some aspiration swaps to get the power. Now, that will increase the weight, but uh, a nice supercharger on here might be quite good fun. I think we are. I think we are actually going to. I was planning on using the standard engine. I like to keep the standard engine in these cars unless they really can't reach the top of A class without them. So we may have to. I think we're going to go. I'm going to go supercharger. I'd rather for autocross. You know, it's a lot of short uh, acceleration bits. I would rather, given the choice, go for a supercharger. Turbos aren't completely unusable here. However, given the option, I would rather take a supercharger. Uh, so we will go back uh, into here and we will upgrade this. Ah, fantastic. Holy crap, I've just seen the amount of torque. The amount of torque we're going to be getting out of this thing is immense. I may want to go and uh, do this. Get an upgraded gearbox for this car. Uh, give me, hopefully, better gear ratios. I don't know how good a standard... Uh, standard gearbox would uh, would fare around the autocross. So yeah, we will go with uh, an upgraded gearbox. Uh, can we sneak on any more any more power? Yeah, we'll bottle another eight horsepower. Any more? No, uh, no, we haven't done that one there because that does add weight on. Uh, sure, we'll go with that. Seven hundred and twenty-six foot-pounds of torque and six hundred and forty-three horsepower. That is a mega amount of power. Huge amounts of power in this vehicle. It will be, I suspect, mighty fast accelerating out of the gates. The real question, though, is will it be able to carry any speed through the corners? We can save two and a half pounds there. Can we save anything with... Okay, that'll, we can save it, but it'll jump us up into S-Class. So, 
we will go with the street drive line then on the car. Uh, I'm pretty sure Clutch won't. Nope, <laughs> Clutch won't let us do anything. Right, that would be our vehicle ready. Mega horsepower, mega torque. Quite a lot of weight though, and a very large vehicle to start with. It's going to be an interesting prospect. That is that is for sure. Of course, to test out the Oldsmobile, I have brought it to the Hockenheim circuit, where it will have three laps in an attempt to go as fast as possible. Our current leader is the Lamborghini Miura with the 203.3. Although I'll be honest, we're not really looking at that end of the table for the for the Oldsmobile. Its main competition is probably going to be the 65 Mustang at 208. That I think is a reasonable target for this for this vehicle, considering its well general size and and weight. I think it's going to struggle to navigate the course a huge amount faster. Admittedly, I have been wrong about vehicles before. Who knew the Jeep Grand Wagoneer was such an amazing autocross machine? So maybe we could get a rather rapid time out of the Oldsmobile. We should certainly have plenty of acceleration from this car as uh, we fire all 650 horsepower and many of the torque off of the line. We've actually got a lot more turning than I was expecting. That was not a particular, <laughs> not the greatest of starts from, uh, from me there. I really wasn't expecting it to uh, quite get turned in as well as it did. Okay, I'm quite impressed so far, although we haven't quite got that much grip to, uh, <laughs> to be getting through there. We will have to be slower through that section. Yeah, okay, well, I'm learning. That is, that is the, that's often what this first run will be used for, is learning what you can and can't get away with in a certain vehicle, and I, well, can't get away with doing that much in the Oldsmobile. How are we going to fare through here? Oh, that's not bad, actually. That's really not too shabby. You can feel a little bit of understeer kicking in, and then a little bit of oversteer as well. Oh, it's mighty fast. It is mighty fast accelerating. The brakes aren't too good, though. Trying to get the whole thing slowed down again is uh, a little scary. I mean, it's it's matching the very fastest cars for acceleration down that uh, very short back straight, but not quite matching them in terms of getting stopped. Now, this is where we are likely to see most trouble. No, the Oldsmobile actually dances its way through the uh, tightest gate on the circuit. How do we do with the change? Yeah, that change of direction I feared we may see a bit of a wheel spin, but we have made it through there safely. Uh, oh, through the tunnel, this is a, a very wide car. Don't get caught out by the width of the vehicle as we run around the hairpin. I'm, I'm quite impressed actually with, uh, with this vehicle. It is actually handling pretty damn nicely as we come around the uh, up towards the final corners now yeah i'm quite liking the uh, the Oldsmobile i'm liking the noise and the power that we have going on in this and now we just have to weave our way up oh, <laughs> can't quite maintain my speed in the same way as we weave towards the line well three gates were clipped in now that is 15 seconds worth of uh, time penalties and a couple of little mistakes here and there it was yeah, a learning experience, I think we'll go with for that first run. Right, on to the second attempt. Let's try and not clip any barrels this time out. That would generally be a uh, relatively good way to go. I am yeah, relatively impressed with the vehicle's change of direction. It's not, it's not completely and utterly horrendous. It is maintaining decent speed through some of these gates. I think what's going to ultimately kill the Oldsmobile's time is the braking. It is very difficult to uh, get this car slowed down and it does not like that gate there. It can get going quite quickly out of the other side again once you have got it turned. Oh, I think I'll just clip that with the uh, with the splitter on there. Uh, it does not like that high speed, that high speed gate. It's really being a bit of an ass to... Uh, to get the car turned in. These bits down here though, it is not too too bad with. It's you know, it's gonna be slower than the likes of the Lamborghini Mura and the Focus and whatnot. But for what it is, oh we did not have quite enough grip to make that one there stick flat out. That is it's very much on the limit flat out. And if you uh, 
get it a tad wrong, you end up, uh, you kind of end up understeering and then you try and uh, correct it. You got to get some oversteer if you're not careful and uh, yeah. <laughs> It's a little bit of a handful when you've really got it on the on the limit. When you're not quite on the limit in such a ridiculous manner, it's managing these gates very, very well. Okay, try not to slide the car through that section. Really try to slow it down. Oh god. Yeah, it's a shame the brakes are not quite not quite there. It's not perhaps too surprising after all. It is a rather large, rather heavy vehicle, and it won't have, you know, even with the uh, the Forza race brakes, they're still not going to be the most effective things comparatively to the uh, sports cars and whatnot that have gone around here. Okay, now let's not mess up this uh, final run towards the line, and we'll try and possibly maintain a little bit more in the way of speed. Despite this being one of the more powerful, one of the most torquey vehicles, that's not too bad. 218.7, again, 10 seconds worth of time penalties. This is going to be close to the to the Mustang. And yeah, I was about to say as we ran towards the line, the, uh, all of the power, all of the torque, it's got still huge amounts of traction going on. On to the final run for the Oldsmobile. I've just noticed how wonky that front grille kind of chrome trim is, and that's uh, a little bit peculiar. Anyway, uh, yes, I've got to try and stay away from the barrels. That would uh, indeed be helpful. I do think there is a little bit of time, certainly, to be found in the car. We can get under a 208. I think that would be uh, that would be doing well. Kind of what I set out to do in the first place, beating the Mustang GT. Certainly our biggest test, probably, definitely the toughest corner on the course, is this one here, trying to get that right. And we are through cleanly with half decent speed. It's not quite enough to uh, be worrying the mirror, but that's, uh, yeah, it was not too bad through there. It's actually relatively well planted through that section, quite neatly done through the next turn as well. Now, can we keep the speed up through here? Yes, we can, because we can get such a fantastic acceleration off, uh, off of the other side. I've done a little lift there, because the back end does want to uh, come round at that section. The first car that hasn't oversteered at the first of the high speed gates and then oversteers through the next bit that's normally flat out for well, just about everything. So <laughs> yeah, some peculiar balance going on with this car. Now, up next, we have got this uh, little wriggle now if we can get it. There we go. If we can kind of slow it down in the middle of the corner, we can boot it and get a really good run off of it. I mean, it's up towards 40 miles an hour as it left, uh, 50 miles an hour, sorry, as it left that tight section. And that is not too bad going, especially for a very large muscle car. Don't let the back end oversteer. You don't want any twitches coming towards the tunnel. The tunnel has only ever caused problems for the Hummer. That's been the only car that hasn't been able to uh, get through the tunnel flat out. However, with uh, a twitch of oversteer at the wrong time, I could well see this ending up in the walls. Oh, come on, come on, come on, get turned, get turned. And now we have just got the uh, final, oh, it's struggling a little bit. I think I might have been pushing it a smidge too hard through there. Now we have the final run towards the line. I can't quite get on the power as soon as I want to. This is going to be pretty good, though. 207.7 from the Oldsmobile. That was a bit faster than I was perhaps expecting on that final run. We did get a couple of really, really neat sections. I know I overdrove it into about one corner. Uh, just towards the end there, uh, I ran a little bit wide. However, yeah, pretty pleased with that. Pretty damn pleased with that, actually, as a, as a run. The, the traction in the car is incredible, as you would expect from such huge tyres. It can put the power down and you can get fantastic acceleration off of the corners, which often means if you drive a little bit slower, uh, yeah, kind of slow into the corner and get fast out of the turn. does work pretty well with this kind of car. It could maintain some decent high-speed grip at places, although the uh, slightly scary random oversteer was not quite to my liking, but we got away with it. Just, uh, just about. The time will put the car 
into 31st place. It goes faster than the BAC Mono by not very much. No, not not very much at all in there, but it does go faster than the BAC. It beats the MX-5, the Mitsubishi GTO, uh, the Opel GT, and it does go quicker than the Mustang GT. However, it is beaten by the Datsun 510, Holden Commodore, Opel Cadet, the Escort Cosworth. Yeah, it's certainly not the ideal car when it comes to, to autocross. It's too large and too heavy, really. However, the power and torque does make up for that to an extent. The handling at times, though, is still a little bit erratic and a little bit scary, trying to get it through a couple of the uh, couple of the corners. But yeah, I'm I'm impressed. It, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. Certainly, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. However, yeah, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.